I'll count who, this in. Uh, the only question I have is like, who's Wallstead? Oh, yeah. You said Wallstead. Wallstead. Um, Joey, do you know who that is? What? Wallstead. Who is that? You talking about yesterday? What? I don't get it. You're so obtuse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> You're either you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. Welcome aboard episode 42 of Riding the Bus, the official Iowa Wild podcast presented by Central Iowa Pool and Spa. Headed your way, Ben Gislason, Joey Goldstein. The dog days of summer are here. We are in late August. Wild on Wheels and Pella was a smashing success. Your day at the Iowa State Fair couldn't have been further from a smashing success. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. A very successful interview today with goaltending coach and former NHL goaltender Richard Bachman. Really, really fun, as any fans who listen to this show who watch the broadcast know. I'm a fanatic when it comes to goalies. I love goalies. I could have done that for another three hours with yep. Bacher. I, I ask him probably far too many questions, and I get way too into the weeds with him. We didn't do that. We, we didn't yeah, get yeah, too yeah. nerdy with the goalie talk today. I wanted to You're ask welcome. him. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask him about the RVH, which is essentially the way goalies play off the post. But that, I thought, was too unnecessary yeah but his but son's asking about it so yeah. <laughs> you know maybe maybe not yeah maybe his not. son Knox, uh, a potential possible future goalie star current goalie in the des moines youth hockey organization has tryouts today we, yeah. we learned that as well so a really good chat with bacher and you should all look forward to tuning in for that but joey before we get there just a few brief notes to yeah, touch it's on. It's not a lot. We're kind of there's in not a lot to talk about. We're right in that now. weird moment of the off season. I think we talked about this last year too. Like this is the time where hockey people are taking their vacations, right? There's a lot they of they are. This is the time where people get out of town because in like two and a half weeks it picks up and it doesn't stop till the season's end. Ends basically, <laughs> right? Till <So> May. <laughs> like yeah. we always talk. I know in the in the in the office uh, on the business side, not the hockey ops side, that it's like. We get through the state fair, and that's really when things start to ramp up. But there's still that just kind of lull, if you yeah, will. Like yeah, you, f you still got Labor Day. And then once Labor Day passes, at least for me, Labor Day is always like the signal of like, all right, now summer's actually done, mm -hmm. and it's time to you know, pull up the bootstraps and just get going. Because uh, once you guys head out for the prospect showcase, the Tom Travers showcase, it starts, and, it, and then it truly it. does not stop. Um, so yeah, not, there's really not a lot going on, but we've talked in the past about guys who were here last year that have moved on to different places in the league. Um, some guys, you know, overseas or whatever, but in terms of staying in the AHL, it's always nice to bring those up, especially faces that we are going to see, uh, this year. And we've got two who we haven't, it happened a little while back, but we've never really brought them up. Uh, but Nick Sweeney and Kevin Conley. So Swain's signed in Chicago with the Wolves. So somebody who we'll see quite a bit. Yep. And Kevin Conley signed in Manitoba. So we will also see him quite a bit. So uh, two guys who I think Cons obviously certainly has deserved, you know, everything that, that he's gotten his w come his way. And I'm excited to see Yeah, him. he's earned every inch. Like he's going to be great for Manitoba, someone who I don't love to have to play against, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> no. Um, nor Nick Swainy for no, that matter. No, and neither Swain's, But yes. the, the thing with Swain's, not to say that Swain's hasn't deserved the year because he absolutely has, but to just to know what he went through last year injury wise, and and really most of his time oh, here, totally. Like to to know that he's still got the hunger to continue playing because I know that can be something that you think about after some time when you, when you have so many injuries, right? Yeah. Him still having the hunger to play, but also somebody still being able to be like this guy is someone else agrees and like he can still do it and still has it and, and wants to see him succeed so uh i'm excited for the both of them I'm excited that we still get to see them back and forth but not thrilled to have to play against them that's for sure well put i i couldn't say it better myself there's always a love hate thing when you see somebody sign in the central division because what it's I nice when we take them from somewhere else <laughs> it's always nice when we but take but them what i else. what i love about it is Let's look at Joe Hicketts, for example. I can't wait to see Joe this year. I'm so excited to get to Don't see Joe. Don't want to play against him either. Don't want to play against him. But the other side is I, I didn't get to see Joe last year. Yeah. Where I'll get to see Nick Sweeney, Kevin Conley, two guys I hold in very high regard, not only as players but as people. Mason Shaw, same story. How about Brandon Baddock last year? Yes, I mean yes. A, a, a 
Brandon Baddock was a wonderful guy to have here. Great man. You don't like seeing them play against your team. Yeah. You love getting after the game, you know, Bads, how you doing? You love getting yeah. to see these yeah. guys again and see them a lot if you're Rockford or Chicago yeah. or, or Manitoba, but you don't like having to see them lay, uh, lay punishment on your team, sure. whether it's on the score sheet or as Brandon Baddock loved to do it with, with his, his fists, fists or, yeah. or with his body. Yep. So that that's the love-hate side of it. Um, but uh, Nick Sweeney, when he first got here, specifically his first full season, he came in from UMD, successful career, Minnesota Duluth, got hurt in, I think, the – Three games he played, I think he broke his jaw, if I remember correctly. He took a high stick or a puck, I think. He was drinking out of a straw for a few months after the season was done. Comes back, he's healthy. And he lit the world on fire. Great start, start hurt again. Yep. And he, uh, he <coughs> I think he had just maybe scored, or he had a maybe a couple games in a row where he'd scored before he got hit in Rockford. And, boy, that was a scary hit. I remember seeing it coming. It's one of the, some, one of the great tragedies of being a broadcaster because you see the ice from so far away. Yeah. Sometimes you see those plays coming, and yeah. you just want to scream yeah. because there's no way Nick could see it coming, and here comes Josh Healy, and I just remember going, oh, dear. And then he hit him, and it was oh, it was hard to watch. Mm -hmm. um, Nick Sweeney, to me, is someone that if he can ever string together a healthy season, I think he's got NHL capabilities. I, I agree. I really think he does. I agree. Um, I remember thinking that right away. Uh, can score, can skate, can create. Um, has a nose for the net. He'll go to the hard areas. Will he still go to the hard areas now that he's had the injury background that he's had? Um, but certainly wishing Nick nothing but success with the Wolves. Um, and hopefully he can maybe play that into some kind of a contract, whether it's with Carolina there now, again, yeah. <laughs> parent team, yeah. um, or Back elsewhere. Like left. <coughs> yeah, or elsewhere. That yeah. was another funny thing, doing my notes for, for not to get totally sidetracked, but doing notes for opponent charts for my broadcasts i do those now leading up to the season and doing chicago's was like it's all these players you forgot about yeah. because they were gone <coughs> last yeah. year and now all of a sudden they're back, back again i'm like wait some weird deja vu world yeah. we're living in uh <laughs> with all those carolina prospects coming back into the chicago fold but nick sweeney will be a part of that fold and wish him nothing but success except against iowa of Correct. course which is what i say yep. to all of them if i get to see them but uh, excited for Nick uh, and for Kevin, but especially for Nick, just because I, I want to see him get that runway. His yeah. runway's been so short. I, I want to see him get that chance to prove to the pro hockey world what he can do with hopefully 72 games. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else we want to touch on? No, we got a nice long one with Richard Bach. It is so. a, a really enjoyable chat. For those of you who love the goalie fraternity like I do, drink it in. It's a great chat. Uh, former Dallas Star, Edmonton Oiler, Vancouver Canuck, Utica Comet, where he starts with a real banger of a bus story. Yeah. Really good bus story from his time uh, in, in playing days. And now uh, the goalie coach of the Iowa Wild, Richard Bachman. Before we start our interview and hear a pretty exciting bus story <laughs> from Richard Bachman, uh, we got a shout out Central Iowa Pool and Spa. Upgrade your backyard entertainment with a luxurious Sundance Spa from Central Iowa Pool and Spa. Our hot tubs offer ultimate in relaxation and hydrotherapy, perfect for unwinding after a long day or socializing with friends. Enjoy features like powerful jets, soothing waterfalls, sciatic jets, and hip jets. Mm. Let us choose the perfect spa to enhance your outdoor living experience. Call us at 515-263-6900 or stop in on Northeast 14th Street in Des Moines and visit the store. I'm so proud of you and the growth you've had in your read game. There was a, there was a day and time where when you would have looked at sciatic in a read and you would have never been able to get over that. You I, look I at can you now. I can read, Ben. <laughs> like it's not like I can't read. I can read. It's uh, sometimes phenomenal. big words get the best of me, and these are longer reads than usual. But I'm, uh, I've grown. Oh, I've matured. I just want the hip jet. Yeah, that oh, sounds right awesome. There. The well, sciatic piece sounds great and too. And the Sundance Spa. That's what we have now in the back of the locker oh, room. Is that actually what it you is? That's what we have a Sundance. And Richard Bachman with us now. I know you're excited about trying out the new hot tub at some point, but. That'll be your first time in the hot tub, and we've done a lot of interviews, but this is your first time on Riding the Bus, so welcome, and thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to do this, and uh, 
answer a few questions of yours. You gave us a little teaser to what your bus story is. Joey gave the fans a little teaser to your bus story. Riding the bus, we want to get fans on the bus next to Richard Bachman. Just swapping stories. Tell us a great bus story. All right. So one of the most memorable bus stories, because there's a lot of them, some you can tell, some you can't, uh, was when I was playing in Utica with the Comets. I forget where we were going. Um, I think we had just played, and we had the same driver every time. We're rolling down, um, I think it was like I-90. I think, like I said, I can't even remember where we were going. All of a sudden, we're just cruising. Everyone's tired. Start, you start to smell a little smoke. Never good. And no, not good. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> so smell a little smoke. Don't really think much of it. It could be brakes. could be anything. We're just, we just want to get to where we're going. And a little bit of time goes on, and more sto- smoke starts to fill the back of the bus, and that's where I was kind of sitting. So at, at some point, I was like, this is not normal. We, we should probably actually say something, <laughs> right? You think everything's fine. You were the first the responder in this situation. Yes, exactly. Yes. So <coughs> we go up. We tell the bus driver. He pulls over on the side of the highway, and we got smoke coming out of the bathroom laboratory. He goes back there. Apparently, uh, it, whether it was a small fire, I don't know. But he's back there for a few minutes. He's got the fire extinguisher out <laughs> and comes back out. And I don't know. He's like, yep, good to go. No problem. <laughs> Slap a Band-Aid on yeah. it. Goes, <laughs> so smoke is still kind of coming out. He goes, we're like, well, what about the smoke case? Like, this is this can't be good, right? And he's like, yeah, we're fine. It, it's all under control. Just open up the, the vents up top, the emergency exit. Just so oh. it can, yeah, the smoke can filter out. And there we, were, there we go. We had smoke coming out, and we got to where we were going somehow. But uh, you just open a window and don't worry about it. So that was uh, one of the more memorable times on the road. Yeah, that one doesn't just slip out of the memory bank. Yeah, usually if you remember flame, that flames one. Flames involved will keep memory for a long yeah, time, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. So that or I'd rather almost have that than when you're sleeping in the bus at 2 in the morning and all of a sudden the driver gives it a rear, rears to the right and you hit the rumble strips like do 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 That one jars you. That'll pucker you up real quick in the middle of the night. So wasn't that intense, I guess. Yeah, th- I'd the only one like that, I well, I've, the rumble strip, I've had that experience. When I was broadcasting in junior, we had a bus driver pull in to get gas and hit the gas pump. And that nice. was a screeching noise at about 3.30 a.m. outside Omaha that I'll never forget, oh waking yeah. up to that. Yep. Yeah, that was uh, – I won't even replicate it on the air. That would be bad for our listeners' ears. But it was <laughs> thank you. It was something. We yes. all thank yeah. you. Yeah. We Fox. also had a uh, – well, you know those street, like, you're in a city, and they have the banners off the street light poles? Oh. <laughs> and we're trying to park this thing. Remember this one now. And everyone's, you, you think you're a driver. Like, you're like, oh, watch out, watch out. Well, everyone's screaming, watch out. This guy's like, I got this. Totally in control. Boom. Tries to park this bus, and one of those poles comes right through the window. <laughs> smack. <laughs> window shatters. He didn't have it. Did not have it. Did not have it. it. No. Cut her a little tight. Yeah, yeah, I've got a little close there. It so. is amazing when you're when you've spent as much time on a bus as you have, and I'm I'm catching up as I continue to work in in my career. But some of the turns bus drivers make, it's incredible. Because I've had I can have so many memories where I think about well, they're not making this. Yeah, they're not making it. Nope. Then they just <laughs> they don't even decelerate. Mm-hmm. They accelerate sometimes yep. out of those turns. That is one example of when they didn't they didn't make it and something Did comes through the window. It, uh, I would say ninety eight percent of the time they do. They make it and it's it's amazing. So it and is uh, great geometry. Exactly. Uh, bus drivers, <laughs> Bacher, there as you well know, and as any of our fans that have listened to you and I do interviews before. I'm fascinated by the goalie craft, and, and you and I could sit here forever and cover things. We're not going to keep you here all day, but lots that we do want to get to. Not only your career, your transition into goalie coaching. Obviously, Jesper Volstead is going to come up in this discussion. But let, let's start with this one. I always equate goaltending to pitching in baseball to being a quarterback in, in football. As far as team sports go, there are few more demanding mentally positions, in my opinion, than being a goaltender. Do you think it's the most mentally challenging as far as team sports go? Yeah, I think you put it right there with pitching, a quarterback in football. Um, just you, you have to be on, and you have to be on for basically the entirety of when you're performing. And, and not to take anything away from the players, because it's mentally demanding to be able to do what they do, but if you take one or two minutes off 
all of a sudden that could be the whole 60 minute game could be done with that so staying mentally sharp is can be very difficult and i do i agree it's it's one of the hardest things to do how do you coach that how do you teach that i'm sure some of it you just have it or you don't yeah but i would imagine in your career and in goalies you've coached you've seen growth in that space you've had growth in that space what's the learning point for that yeah, I, th- I think it sometimes goes back to just the old saying, like, never too high, never too low. And starting to instill that at a younger age so you don't have all these roller coasters of emotions going on out there. Um, as far as teaching it, like you said, you kind of have it or you don't. I think from what I've found in coaching goalies and coaching at a high level is oftentimes you find out how they kind of tick and what kind of locks them in and whether that's a phrase or a couple keywords is kind of something I've tried to do with guys. Um, you know, ev- even Wally is, you know, eyes down, hands forward, um, stuff like that. And I- if he was starting to skew or get a little off, you can kind of pop those words in and it kind of dials them right back to right, right in the moment. And then the other side is, especially now you have a lot of like your mental performance coaches and stuff and one of the big things i've taken away from that is having a reset because you're never going to be perfect goals are going to happen but having like a mental reset whether you have something in the arena the flag which is in every single arena or something on your post just it kind of it's just a routine that you do can kind of reset and be like i belong here like i got this boom now you're back focused in what you're doing or a couple little things you can kind of help teach them to be themselves I'm already engrossed in this now. Yeah. Well, yep. he, I remember, <laughs> well, not last year, the year before, I was a member of the University of Brockton Goalie School. Um, yes, and you uh, are. Yeah. And you did phenomenal. No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but I appreciate you trying to make me feel mm, better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, there was no reset for me. <laughs> there was no reset. We tried. There was nothing. But Ty Ronning couldn't score on me. That's right. So he could not. I can at he least could not. hold that in my pocket. What were your resets? Do, do you, if you think back when you were a player, what were your words? What were the things that helped you lock it in? I remember Zane McIntyre telling me he had an anchor, things that he did to an- yeah. re-anchor, reset. What were those for you? Yeah, for me, it was pretty much before before every center ice face off for sure. Not so much in zone just because there's other stuff going on. You're trying to read the alignments and everything. But uh, my three words were focus, determine, alert. And that's what I would tell myself. And and then uh, the other side of it was worry about the next shot. That's all I could worry about. Didn't matter what just happened. Didn't matter if there's going to be a rebound or a different play. Like, I can't control any of that stuff in that moment. Just got to worry about that next shot. Because if you don't stop the next one, none of that it matters. As great of a so save as you just made, who cares? Yep, yeah, exactly. So it was focus, determine, alert, and just worry about the next shot. Is what I would tell Sounds myself. like instructions I try to give myself when I golf. Yes. Not very well. But again, <laughs> they're the mentally demanding sports. That's why I said team sports. <laughs> yes. Because, yeah, golfers, it's just <laughs> them. And if you make a mistake, who are you going to blame? Well, you. Um, who's the best goalie in the world right now? If you had to pick mm. one. That's tough. I think a yes, lot of people it's a very think hard Vasilevsky I- is still on top. And for me, he's right there. But yeah. I think this past season, Igor Shosturkin really took a big step in my eyes of kind of putting himself – right near that very very top i think um the rangers are a really good team obviously but i think he helped mask some some issues at times and kind of you even saw it in playoffs here he had some amazing performances just to kind of keep the momentum going for that team and um he he was this last season just his compete level was off the charts and i think he's going to have a really good year coming up trying to even get a sniff at being an NHL goalie, I don't even know what I would compare it to because it's hard enough to get there as an eighth defenseman or a 13th forward. There are two positions on every team, and on many teams there's really only one. You look, you look at Shesterkin, he's going to play so many games. Yep. There, are, uh, and, and you're moving away from that a little bit now with the, <coughs> the two-goalie system, more some of the maybe the Martin Brodeur days or even, even yep. your days a little bit to some extent. Yep. But you got there. You had some extended stays in the National Hockey League, Edmonton, Dallas, Vancouver, the teams that I think about when I think about Richard Bachman in the National Hockey League. And yet 
you still never really got there and stayed there for an extended period of time. Yet when you look in the grand scheme of things, what a career you had because it's so hard to get there and be an Igor Shosturkin. Can you put that as a goalie into words for people, how difficult it is to get to that point and even just to get a crack at an NHL game because there is just so little availability for it? Yeah, it's it's tough to put into words how difficult it really is. Um, not only when you look at the number of goalies in the world, which is still a pretty small number, but then, like you said, you have basically there's 60 jobs and everyone's fighting for 30, or I guess thir- 64, 32 now when mm-hmm. I was going at least 30. But uh, So there's 32 main jobs. And not to say the the backup or the second goalie is not important. Everyone knows that that can make or break your season right there. Um, but you're fighting for a very limited number of spots. It, it, it's almost like winning the lottery. And, and to <laughs> yeah. do it, you have to be at the right place at the right time. The right opportunity has to come. It's kind of a little like the Olympics, right? It happens every four years. So if your age doesn't line up with those and you're not in your peak at the right exact time, it's probably not going to happen for you. And you go in and there's a young or a 25-year-old and he's just hitting his prime. He could be there for another 10 years. And to then try and push him out gets really, really difficult. So it's uh, it might be easier to win the lottery if you tried hard <laughs> enough. Um, you got to stay healthy. You, you got to have the right breaks at the right time. And you got to put in all the work on the side to, to do it. And then once you get there, it's probably – harder to stay there because now you're when you get up there you're allowed to have some mistakes on the way up but once you're in the national hockey league you got to win and you got to do it or they're going to find someone that can for your longest stay what went right for you to get there you obviously you had a marvelous career at colorado college right into the dallas texas organization from there but it took you a few years to really get there and stay there for a little while what went right for you in that moment that helped get you there as much as you want to say it was only you that got yourself there, that's probably 85% of it, but that other, that other yeah. 15% no. has to be things that are probably out of your control. For sure. For when in Dallas there, everything kind of aligned from the coaching staff I had in the minors. I was able to play well for them. We had a really good team my first year, and then I was able to play well for them. They moved up. So Glenn Goldson moved up to Dallas. So that right there was one – big obstacle is when I got there, he'd already seen me play a bunch and he already had some trust in me. So then when I was able to play for him in Dallas and get some wins, he already had that trust. It wasn't like, Oh, maybe this is just kind of a fluke. Like he was like, no, I think he can play. Like, so right there is one, one thing. The other side of it was the, um, I won't say his name on here, but one of the goalies was having trouble getting wins and had he (coughs) been, able to win a few more games yeah. there's a good chance that i just get sent down because that's the way it goes and like we talked about there's people that already have the jobs and for extended time and so that was another aspect of it and then just you know you get not lucky but you you put the work in to get it but the games have to go right too sometimes if you have your best possible game you could still lose it four three and like i said in the nhl they want they want to win, and it could look like you lost the game, and yeah. it's easy to send you back. There's so one currency up there, isn't there? Yep, exactly. So there's, um, yeah, there's there's so many things that just had to align perfectly for me to even get kind of that that longer term sniff at it. You, you talk about winning the lottery. I can confirm that's difficult too. Yep, <laughs> I've tried that as well. <laughs> uh, that is not easy to do. So uh, for those of you who have made it as a goalie, maybe go play the lottery. You right. get a better <laughs> chance. Um, how much has the position itself changed from when you finished playing to where it is now? And like just the the guys who are playing the position in general, how much has that grown? Oh, it's, it's grown tremendously. Like the attention to the detail in the game is what really for me has grown the most. I mean, I remember turning pro and uh, we would, which is RBH now, but we just called it butterflying on your post. They hadn't really, the whole model of it hadn't come over from Sweden yet. And so we were kind of doing it, but not with a lot of detail, Mm -hmm. um, not as efficiently and effectively. 
Um, so that's that's one of so the details of it, and then just the strength and pace at which these guys play at now, the agility they have, the flexibility. Even your six six guys, they're all fast, mobile. They're athletes. Um, there was a phase there. It was a little before when I got in, where you had a lot of blocking goalies. They just got big and were hoping pucks would hit them. Now they're able to use that style with their quick athletic style all in one package, and it's just making the goalies that much better. Is there somebody in particular who stands out in your mind as like, this is the guy who really set this trend off on the path that it's on right now? Um, ooh, that's a good question. He's a good yeah. journalist, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm not really sure, actually, who would have been, like, the first one to really bring, like, say, RBH over. Um, it just kind of evolved, and, you know, you get a couple guys starting it, and then coaches – learn it and they go or they go over to Sweden or wherever some like now their model is a little bit more in the Russian style and how they're training and you go and you learn and just everyone starts to kind of mm -hmm. catch on and catch up and just evolve it even further looking at uh so goalies for us this year I mean let's start with obviously the, the big one with with Jesper right what are and we don't we obviously we don't know how much time he's gonna spend here versus up in Minnesota and and vice versa but like what is the big thing i'm sure he's somebody you're in talks with pretty consistently throughout the summer what is what are the things that everybody's really getting him to to work on most like what's his focus throughout the off season yeah for him it's the message is pretty similar to what it was a year ago today off season is really a big focus on his strength training and his conditioning and just really He's, you're seeing him mature and he's maturing in his body and now it's putting on some of that real strength that he's going to be able to, to work with. Um, so that's a, that's obviously the biggest focus in the off season for a guy like Wally. And I think the other message for him this off season was that when he is on the ice, when he is doing his goalie work, is the details. They, even though it's not a game, because a lot of young guys, they just want to play games. Yeah. And, and that's great. And we all – Everyone wants to play games, but there's times where you have to practice or for in his case, um, if he wants to play in the NHL, he's you goes back to making it right. You sometimes have to pay your dues. You're not going to be able to go in and play three out of four games and just stay mm -hmm. right in that rhythm. So practice and those habits on the ice become even more important. So the second half of last year, that was a big focus of, of ours and um, it just the details within practice you're not just out there being a target and wait until friday night comes to mm -hmm. play you gotta you gotta hone in on those details and so that was the message for him this summer yeah i mean that's the stuff that translates most right they practice is what you practice what you want to perform so yeah. i think that's a big part of it last one before i give it back to you ben other guys you got coming in this year with with grossnick uh guys we may see in uh Halavai, mcclellan like are these guys for our fans who aren't super familiar with these three what are the things that you're most excited about for them coming in to potentially be able being able to work with them? Yeah, I think most importantly, they're all competitors. Um, so organizationally, we have a lot of new goaltenders, and they're all they all want to play and they all want to push each other. Um, obviously, we wouldn't sign them if they weren't good people. Mm -hmm. They're all really good people, but they're going to compete and they're going to push each other, and I think that's going to bring the best out of each and every one of them. So there's uh, we got we got quite a mix though with Halavai he he's big and strong and super athletic and quick kind of like we were talking mm -hmm. about this new age goalie, um, but we got a transition from pro hockey in Europe to now North America so that's gonna be some of his challenges and then we got McClellan who was Mike Richter winner um, and so he's a little bit older as a young guy so he's got some maturity under his belt but now we got to ramp up to that next level. We mm -hmm. got to take it from college hockey into pro hockey and that'll kind of be his challenge and it's more playing with a little bit more pace, you know, a little bit a little bit quicker, a little more on time to have success here. So we got we got quite a mix, but they're all going to compete hard. Before we close the loop on Jesper, who is he now that he wasn't when he first arrived here from Sweden? Oh, he is mature. <coughs> he he is you're seeing him mature year after year. Um, and, and not to say he wasn't a mature kid coming in for, what was he, 18 when he came in. He was very mature for yeah, that Pretty age. amazingly in some spaces, right? Yeah, yeah. he was already <coughs> so mature, yeah. so it's yeah. like. Yeah. But you're seeing him mature in, in finding his game and what makes him successful. 
and it's those little details and I think at first when we first got him he had so much success he was arguably the best goalie in the world in his age and so for him it was like I'm just gonna go and do my thing and it's gonna be it's gonna be great and not that we want to take that away we like the confidence and that's great but he's really matured in the fact that he wants to get better and better now he will uh, he's more engaged in asking questions and situational stuff asking questions about anything whether it's on the ice or just in life in general like he wants to do nutrition he wants to do we do i uh, exercise and stuff like that all the little things he wants to keep adding more and more of that so we can have a long and successful career where a few years ago i don't think he not that he didn't want to do it but he's like yeah i got this show up and stop pucks yep mm -hmm. exactly yeah. so now he realizes all these little things that we can kind of add are just going to make him that much better and his openness and willingness to do it all is what's going to make him really good hurdle might not be the right word for this but I is there is there a biggest hurdle ahead that if he can figure this out if he can unlock the door to this the sky's the limit for him Yeah. And it might not even be him or just in general. Is there one big key yeah. to turn the door Minnesota on? Minnesota needs a spot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. that's part of it. That's yeah, it. yeah. 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 Uh, oppor opportunity I is yeah. a big key. Yeah. Um, and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about, like why we identified his practice habits and all of that is to make sure when he's not playing all the time that he is ready. So yeah. when that opportunity, in which they're hard to get in the NHL, comes he's just ready to go just like we kind of saw at the end of last year he got that opportunity shut out in chicago <laughs> played really well in san jose it's getting him to be ready for those moments whenever they do arrive whether you're playing a lot whether it's in the minors or you're playing a lot in the nhl or that you don't play a while whenever you get that next opportunity always being sharp and being ready and then from there he lets his natural ability take over let's finish on jesper with this his nhl debut I'm not sure you could have. Uh, I'm sure other goalies have had, like, bad situations to get thrown into. <laughs> yep. His was one of the worst I've seen. A, a beat-up Minnesota team. They were missing important pieces in that game in Dallas, a Stars team that very well could have won a Stanley Cup this year. They were fully loaded. He gets thrown in there. It doesn't go well. What was the conversation you had with, like, after that game? Um, it was It was emotional. Uh, he he was he was hurting after mm -hmm. that one, and, and I don't blame him. It was a really tough situation. Um, he wanted to. We all everyone wants to do extremely well, especially in their debut. Um, but one thing, people probably I think they realize he's a competitor. But they don't understand how much of a quiet competitor he really is. He doesn't show that emotion or anything. He was here and all he, the time, mm -hmm. and, and he own he owns it all. So when you get him in the room after and more one-on-one -on -one, you allow him just to hey like I, i'm here for you like talk like he he was pretty he was beating himself up pretty good um but but from there we took a lot of positives from that game there was a lot of stuff he actually did really well and you look at the score and you're like there's no way but th there was and there's also some things he didn't do as well as he would have liked and because he takes it personal and he's a competitor he went right to work the very next day making sure that wouldn't happen again for him it uh, it was a tough tough conversation. We actually talked about it for a couple weeks, um, trying to get him to move move past it because um, you get a lot of immediate a lot of media attention yeah. based on that, and just to kind of park it, take what we have to learn from it, and then we just keep building and getting better. And so overall, it was you don't wish that on him ever, um, but there's going to be games like that again in everyone's career at that level. And now he's just learned how to kind of deal with it a little better, park it, move on. But he also learned a ton of great things on what he needs to do to have success in the NHL. He talked about this with me. Uh, it was, I forget exactly when it was. might have been after the Tucson victories, mid-February, because I think that was January when he made his debut yep. in the NHL. He comes back down, does not do well here either coming back. Some losses, strung some losses in a row. And then he, th that sweep against Tucson, I think he may have won both games, if, if not for sure won, had 30-some saves, big night, great performance. We had him on for the post-game interview. And it was, it was crazy because those interviews, for me, I, you ask two questions, you know that the guy's got to get in here, so you don't expect yeah. them to be long. And I, and I just basically said, 
this game to me felt like maybe your get well game. And he went off and talked about how important the loss in Dallas was and the stretch of games he'd gone through down here was. And he's 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 like much like you said, you don't he didn't wish it to happen, but he's he's not looking back on it going, I wish it didn't happen. And I just I was blown away by that because one, to say that on a broadcast interview, two, to have the maturity to look at it like that as a twenty one year old, I was really impressed by that. And then the proof came after that because from about late February on there wasn't much looking back for him in the game that he played. Even in losses, he was pretty yeah, damn good sure uh, down the stretch for the Iowa Wild. And there weren't that many losses towards the end of the year for the Iowa Wild either, March into April. Troy Grosinick, you've yep. been in his role before, a goalie who is probably on the way down from his NHL uh, aspirations but still has a lot to give on the ice, has had a few fantastic seasons not only in Milwaukee but – uh, a few years back when he and Joy were together in San Jose. he's He's been close to the mountaintop in the American Hockey League. He was key for Milwaukee in their run this past year to the Western Final. Loved what he when he had Troy on a couple of weeks ago, and he said, yeah, I'm looking to mentor Jesper, but I, I don't look at it like that. He's he's his, going to be his goalie partner if Jesper's here. How did you approach that when you were in that situation in Utica, more on the back nine of your career than on the front nine? And how valuable is Troy Grosinick to have for this organization, not only for the potential of the bonding with Jesper, but just as a goaltender? Yeah. Um, I guess more on Troy, he's he's a total pro. And that's the reason he's been able to play as long as he has. And and he's an elite goalie. So he's he's played a lot of games in the NHL. He's spent a lot of time there. He's played a ton of games in the American League. And like I said, I, I think organizationally, just having those guys that have been through almost every single thing you could possibly go through is so important, not only for Jesper or the other goalies, but for everyone sitting in this room. He's a guy they're going to be able to lean on to for advice, especially we, we've looked at our schedule. It's There's some tough, there's some yeah, tough good sections point. that <coughs> we're going to have to go through, and it's guys like Grosnick that are going to have to kind of rally the troops and pull everyone with them. And, and he's proven he can do it every single place he goes. And uh, I think the best thing that I like is he's going to be a great mentor, if you want to call it that. But he wants to win hockey games, and he wants to play hockey games. So he's going to compete for ice time. He's going to compete for games. And we saw it last year in playoffs. He kind of took that that over in Milwaukee and went on a really nice run. So he's a, he's kind of the full package and a veteran guy that you're looking for. He's a guy that can play. He's a guy that's a great teammate does things the right way he's gonna help a lot of our goalies out there may not have been anyone in des moines happier that he signed here than joey goldstein yep. when he did yeah, pumped up. <coughs> nice. I, I mean he's someone like you said i i was also very pumped worcester where i started yep. it was his first year there as well and just obviously going through san jose and everything and i think like all the things you guys said he's everything you're looking for for from like a veteran perspective he's gonna bring all that to the table so like you guys said not just for the the goalie element, but for everybody in this locker room, it's going to be a, a big piece to have, as are all the vets that we've signed this offseason. So it's going to be cool. It'll be nice to have them back in the fold. As we get towards the tail end of our chat here, Bacher, questions I always ask goalies. First question, best shooter, best shot you ever saw, where if you knew this guy was teeing it up, you had to be on your A-plus game. Yeah. Oh, man, there's a lot. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of good shooters. And I think every goalie there. I've asked has almost yeah, had this exact same, same thing. thing. No, it's yeah. a hard question. So I guess two, well, two or three memorable. But when I was in Dallas, we had Sheldon Surrey. Uh, oh, so yeah. it wasn't in a game, luckily. <laughs> but the hammer, they called him, and he could just hammer the puck. Like it, I don't know how he did it. I mean, he's big and strong. But that thing, there, there's some shots that get on you quick. There's some shots that when they hit you, it was like feels heavy. This one was quick and heavy. Wow. So you had to be fast, and then you'd try and blow your hand right off. And so it was, uh, like I said, luckily I didn't have to face it in a game. But we actually used to use them in uh, pregame skate, like warm-up. We throw them uh, just a few feet above the top of the circle because we didn't want them that close because he could <laughs> fire it. And do a pass out, and he'd just hammer it. And we were like, well, if we can stop that right now, the rest of the day is going to be pretty easy. So that's, that's one um, best – other best shooter was probably fortunate. I was fortunate enough. Luckily, they didn't score. But Datsuk Zetterberg in Detroit, my first year, got to face them. 
Um, McDavid oh. is a heck of a shooter, but it's more just with the pace that he plays at. He's going so fast that you have to be moving fast, and then he can snap it quick. But uh, but yeah, back to Datsuk and Zetterberg. It was my first, I believe it was my first, first or second, I can't remember now, uh, shootout in the NHL. I was like, so we're it's near the end of the season. We got Datsuk, Zetterberg, and I think it was Hoodler was third. And uh, no slouch either. Yeah, no, the other no, two. <laughs> not, not at all. So, God. but those first two come, and first one I think it was Datsuk. He comes in. I'm expecting like this unreal move. Right. Was this before or after he he? It might have been against Dallas. Did, was it Kari Leighton who he threw literally out of the net with the with the bat the fake backhand toe drag move? Do you know yeah, if this was might before have been, or might after? Have been me. <laughs> 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 but uh, it was, I think it was Datsuk first. I'm expecting a big move. Comes down, shoots. I was like, what? Hits the post. So I'm like, all right, got this. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Right. Just I, I drew it up. I was <laughs> not expecting a shot <laughs> at all. I was like, he's gonna deep. He's gonna uh-huh. deep. Snapped. I'm like, oh. Luckily, hits the post. Zetterberg comes down, comes in. I'm like, for sure, he's going to deep. And then he cuts to my bull, yeah, my blocker side. And I'm so amped up to stop this deke. I go like in the corner. Like, I am not even playing in the game anymore. I'm like out of the arena, packed my stuff. I left. And I'm like in the corner. He goes, he gets me, deeks me, he airmails it. So I'm like, all right, we're in this Two for thing. two, baby. Here we go. So I'm like, I got this. Hoodler, no big deal. He's going to come down. I'll make a save, right? Because after those two, you're like, I got this. K-clock. He comes down. He does the Forsberg one hand post in. They win. Oh. I was like, oh, I was so close. But I wasn't. <laughs> so I only let in one goal, but I didn't touch the puck once. Counts the same, yep, though, doesn't exactly. it? So. Jeez, um, that's a so whale of a good, story. Good shooters, yeah. too. Yeah, well, good. That's that's, yeah, good. that's putting You're it. Okay. Are you looking at the video right now, Joey? I'm just trying to see if yeah. I can find. <laughs> I just got like a random Datsuk shootout goals. Yeah, thing that's there's, popped a, up. That's there's the a one move. Video. Well, he did it a few times, but there's the one move where I, he literally, I forget the goalie. I swear might it might have been, been Dallas. Might that's what I'm looking at. It might have right yeah. been Lightning. But he, he, literally, he was going one way, and the go- much like I think you described with Zetterberg a little yeah. bit, he was going one way, and the goalie literally flew out of the net. Oh, it he's was also just done such a that crazy like, move. He's also done that more than that once. move. Like, that's yes, <laughs> yeah, that's that was yeah. Nashville. I think yeah. that happens quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, feels like with that. Yeah, he, was, uh, he was pretty good. Yeah, he's a decent ice hockey player. Yes. <laughs> um, goalies, I already know the answer to this question because you're super normal. Not all goalies are normal. I'd ask you what I think your teammates would say about you but i've asked what your teammates think about you and uh, i tried to get some dirt on you from a mutual acquaintance of ours one of your very good friends mutual acquaintance of mine who because he's a navy seal would give me nothing because they're <laughs> so loyal i won't name them steel trap yes nothing just said just sent this wonderful text message about how great you are i'm like i know that but give me <laughs> other things <laughs> navy seals and their loyalty That's um right. so i know you're normal but it w- did you have any weird things that you would do to get ready for a game or are there any really weird things you knew maybe goalie partners did you don't have to name anybody but just yeah goalies are out there right they have to be to yeah, play this some, position you have to be ones. yeah but i've seen some interesting players too now <laughs> that, that i've done this <laughs> long enough so <laughs> no i think um for me and actually, if I went back and did it all over again, I, I, w- I don't know if I would change it because I was pretty happy with my career. But I would be. I was, whether you call it OCD or, like, I just, I had my routines. And even on game day, like, I didn't want to talk to a lot of people. I was extremely focused. I had visual stuff. I had my ball routine. So I think that was probably where y- you could look on a game day and be like, that's why is he still crossed into weird territory yeah, a little why bit. is he still doing this exactly the same like he's bouncing his legs the same he's putting his gear on exactly mm-hmm. the same so that's where i got a little I, i'd say i got a little weird zetterberg sent him into the corner last night why is he doing this again it didn't work for <laughs> exactly, him exactly <laughs> exactly so i just kept going right back to it so um that was probably my quirk is my preparation i was very disciplined in it yeah um, almost to a fault where sometimes looking back, I'm like, oh, I could have just relaxed a little more. <laughs> Maybe just take it all in sometimes. But goalies are weird. So how about just maybe the if I say what's the weirdest thing you knew somebody would do before a game? Maybe it's not even a goalie. Is there anything that jumps oh, out man. to you? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Ooh, well, uh, yeah, I've seen. I had there's one player I played with that before games, he wouldn't. He refused to cut his fingernails. He would never cut them on a game day, because in his mind, he needed the energy that it took his body, which I don't think this is true. This is not scientifically <laughs> backed. But the energy that it took to grow your fingernails, which I think they're always growing anyways. I don't think you can pause that I have no idea. to get more energy. He needed that energy to be able to play his best during the games. So he wouldn't cut his well fingernails. Every inch matters. Yeah. Every centimeter matters. I, I guess so. so. Those metric systems. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's weird. So, yeah. So he wouldn't cut his fingernails because. Not mm. as weird as it gets, I think. That's mm. weird. Yeah. I'm he sure there's that, weirder, that but that's weird. little bit of energy mm. could have helped him score. It's not. It maybe so isn't. I don't know. It maybe yeah, isn't North, even North, North American. Guy? I don't know what's more strange. Is that I think about that story. <laughs> You're like, trying oh, to weed out who it is over there. North American what country is he from? He what position did he play? <laughs> who did he play strange. for? What was his draft year? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's maybe even the the purpose, not even as much the action or the lack of action that's weird about it. It's the reasoning behind why yeah. they wouldn't cut their fingernails. That's the weirdest part. And of then it my other the side, energy I was thing. like, well, I don't know. I had a lot of game days. I, not once was I like, oh, am I going to cut my fingernails or not today? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like this, you know, today's, the, I needed to do it today. Yeah, today's the day, but we got a game. Like Darn it, it's a game. Yeah. I can't do it now. Like, Look at these. Yeah, what am I going exactly. to do? Like, can't I stop a good way to, like, good way to take your you're mind sitting off. Sitting <laughs> like, I should cut these, but I can't. <laughs> um, Joey, you got anything else? I only have uh, a couple more to get to. Yeah, I got two questions. Uh, they don't come from me. That's uh, right. Very clearly don't come from me. Uh, they, they come from down the hall. Um, <laughs> in the equipment room. Yeah, in the equipment room. We may be starting a new segment on yeah. our podcast where we get questions from our EQ staff. Oh, yeah. perfect. Screen them first, of course. Yes, yeah. and then And then ask yeah. them. Uh, there's two questions. Uh, again, you'll understand they don't apply to me. Uh, <laughs> one. Can't make this clear one. enough. They don't so apply to me. So this is directly from you. Just let me ask a question. <laughs> uh, how do you get your hair to look so good, and who's your stylist? My wife is my stylist, <laughs> for sure, because if you would have seen what I wore before I met her, it was not the same <laughs> outfits. Um, I think a lot of husbands can say the same thing. Yeah. I also can say that, yes. You have good style. I pr that means a lot coming you from you. You have great style. Uh, likewise. And mutual respect. Mutual uh, respect. And then the hair, I don't know if it always looks that good. But I'm very fortunate. Again, my wife, her father is a hairstylist. So for the last 12 years, uh. I've had a high-end hairstylist be able to cut my hair. Yeah, and I haven't had to pay for a haircut. Peeking his head so. out of the equipment room there, listening to what's <laughs> going on. <laughs> and it's all the wonderful gel products that they provide for us, our equipment staff in the bathroom. Yeah, that there is one go. of the yeah. very unknown perks of being down here. There's you got mouthwash and... Floss yes. and all these these it's come a long beauty ways, products. It I really could only has. imagine because for a long time, like your only choice, it didn't matter if you were in the minors or the NHL, you were getting LA looks. Ten hold, it had a high sheen on it. <laughs> you looked like you had a Lego head hair <laughs> after leaving the rink, and that's all you had. So it was either <laughs> that or you didn't put anything in it. <laughs> that uh, is LA looks. LA looks. Are they so. still around? Oh yeah, yeah. Still I think around. they, I think they made so many bottles in the '90s that you can have it forever. Yeah, it's it'll, it'll, it'll be anymore. here. Yeah. It'll be here long after the Amazon earth is gone. Amazon. LA looks <laughs> will be around for. There's an Amazon <laughs> warehouse out there, and it's just fully stocked with LA looks, <laughs> yellow. <laughs> Nothing bad in that. Uh, were those your two questions, or did you have a? Those you those asked them both at the same time. Those are my two. Okay. Those are my two. Well, they weren't again. Not mine. Clearly. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> from down the hall, but yeah, you some <laughs> inquiring minds wanted uh, to know. They did, they did. My final two questions for you: uh, Your son Knox has yep. put the pads on. He sure has. And I've asked you this question before, but but for our listeners, goalie uh, as as weird as goalies are, goalie parents may have to be weirder because they don't actually get to stop the puck; they just have to watch their son or daughter get in front of Sheldon Surrey's yep. slap shot. Um, I just I have vivid memories of. Our my goalie in high school and his dad standing right behind the net and he looked miserable, just sweating bullets, just bloodshot yep. eyes, gripping the side of the boards. Did you want him to be a goalie or did it just happen because you were a goalie? Yeah. And I know he still skates out a little bit and maybe yeah. he's not, you know, whether he's fully committed to it or not, but it, it sounds like he's 
Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's in. He he's wants to be a goaltender. How is that? And he loves, but he does love baseball. So true, there's still true. a chance for baseball. Um, when it's baseball season, he's in love with it. But you ask him, like, is hockey your thing? And he's like, absolutely. <laughs> and goaltending, he is all in. I make him skate out a little bit because I want him to be a better skater. Um, and he's, he enjoys skating out too. But if he had the choice, goalie all day, yeah. every day. Um, and no, I did not want him to become a goalie. But – that he grew up watching me play, and the pads are in the house, and the masks, and all he the fun no stuff, chance. and he just kept going. And even when he was just playing out, they didn't have goalies. He'd go stand in front of the net. So I was like, "Ah, oh boy, where <laughs> this is happening?" <laughs> you he saw it coming a long <laughs> way away. You're like, "Ah, oh, he great. didn't. He didn't know it was <laughs> happening, but I did." Um, luckily, I think my job trained me to stay somewhat calm, watching other goalies now. Good point. But, yeah. It's the, different when it's it your has kid, to, it's though. It's your kid, though. His, his first tryout, I was going nuts. <laughs> like, not screaming and yelling. That's not, that's not me. No, I could never see that from you. But uh, he's just he, – because he was six, and he's just, like, kind of on the ice. And sometimes he'd get up. I'm like, get up. Like, <laughs> let's go. Come – look, focus. He's six. <laughs> and, like, just it was a, it was a six-year-old playing ice hockey, and I was just like, come on. But – so now I'm getting better, getting a little more calm. Um, we actually have tryouts coming up, and he had some skates uh, last week. And where I know he loves it is I try and teach him some stuff, nothing crazy because he's so young. I just want him to have fun. RVH. Yeah, no. <laughs> he asked about that. I was like, Did nope, really? nope. I'm like, we're not there yet. <laughs> you got a while until yeah. you're going to be <laughs> exactly. looking into the RVH. Um, but he hops on the ice, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's like shuffling the scraping up the crease and he's doing his crease movements that we worked on that half the time I'm not sure he's even paying attention because I'm his dad and yeah. he's like I don't want to listen to you dad and then he pops out and he goes to the sideboards and he's doing the stretching and he, all the butterfly wiggling and stuff I'm like man he, he pays fun. attention to everything so it's pretty fun watching him pick it up and just the, the joy he has playing. For any parents or even if there are young goalies that could be listening to this podcast is there one piece of advice that you think would hit all the different spaces of being a young goalie that you think for those who don't have a dad that was a National Hockey League goaltender to lean on, what would you, what would you say to a young goaltender? Yeah, I think I'm going to do two things. So the first is learn as much as you can from as many people as you can. So uh, you see in a lot of goalies, but every goalie is a little bit different, and, there's, and, and their bodies are going to develop differently and – some guys have really good hip mobility. Some don't. Like you have to learn how your body can play the position. And for me, it's just by being introduced to so many different things. And you don't have to do every single one of them, but give it a try. So that's a big piece of advice. Learn as much as you can and watch the game and learn as just learn hockey. The second is, and I see it a lot more now because goaltending coach, so I'm, I'm – just as guilty as anyone, you have your private goalie coaches, you have your team goalie coaches. There's such a bigger focus for the position, which is amazing. But at the end of the day, our job is to stop the puck. And however you can do it, stop the puck. It doesn't have to be a perfect A to B T push with a butterfly and proper rotation and post integration. Like, go have fun and stop the puck. Because we can, we're starting. For me, sometimes we get into so much individualized coaching of the position that I see we have a lot of goalies that look really good, but then you get into the game and it's like, well, this is different. I haven't been doing my drill. Like you just got to play the game and have fun and enjoy it, and all the technique, all that stuff will come in time. But just enjoy the game. Stop the puck. Simple. Really enjoyed this. Gosh, I love goalies. My goalie from college is coming into town this weekend. We're going to have a great time together. Goalies, man. It's a beautiful thing. Goalies. I love goalies. Thanks for this. This has been you a real treat. It. Thanks for having me. This has been awesome. A treasure every time. He's a guy that I've frequently, let's say it's a three and three in Chicago, and I don't know what I'm going to talk about in the intermission to fill some Somebody time. Just go grab right to Bacher. Yeah. And he's always more than happy to do it. Again, just there's so much I feel like <coughs> I can cover with him, and I feel like I've still only scratched the surface working with him coming up on five seasons now. Uh, just a, a wonderful man. I should read the text that I got. I, d I don't want to use the gentleman's name because he's a Navy SEAL. 
but um, but the text I got about him, I just if anyone could ever say anything remotely like this about me, I'd be really really happy. Um, pull it up here. Like this is a guy who clearly has had huge impact on people. Richard Bachman. Here, well, while you look it up, we'll just kick off here our, our third period presented by the Wildware yes, Shop. Yes, do that. Right, <coughs> Wildware.com, the official online store of your Iowa Wild with the largest selection of Iowa Wild fan gear, one-of-a-kind apparel, and exclusive specialty merchandise. There's always something new at Wildware.com. Don't miss out. Head to the website now. Start shopping. You got it? Wonderful. I do. I Love do. It. Um, so, his story is unbelievable how he made the NHL undersized, the best goalie I've ever played with, even a better person, was one of the hardest workers I've ever been around. I talk a lot about how leaders and goalies especially have to carry themselves a certain way, and I preach calm breeds calm, and he's the definition of that. Glowing, glowing and You were looking for dirt from that well, guy? Well, that's, that's, that was my response Jeez. was a glowing commendation, but – I don't need that. Like, come on. Thanks, but that's not <laughs> yeah, what I asked yes, for. I said, this is great. These oh. are things I know. Uh, but he's a, a truly wonderful guy and gave us a good amount of time, and I, I'm sure you all enjoyed that that chat as well. So thanks to Richard, uh, and hopefully Knox had a great day at uh, Triumph. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Let's, uh, there's, some, there's some stuff we got to get to here. Yes. Um, but before we get to what everybody's waiting to hear on, I, I want to talk quickly <laughs> on pins and needles about uh, the – Events that we had uh, or have coming up, but also just to recap, uh, last week we were in Pella for our second stop on Wild on Wheels, and I got to tell you, these guys set the gold standard for how these Wild on Wheels uh, events are going to look between Central College, Jeff Peterson, Quickstar, everybody kind of helped pitch in on that on all three fronts, uh, just did a phenomenal job with it. They're, they had everything. Like f This feels like... I'm going to reference a, an SNL skit. I have no idea if anybody will get it. I, Abby's geeking out in the background right now. It's I hope I get it. Stefan will come on Weekend Update. And oh, yeah. Be, uh, Bill Hader. And Bill he's Hader. Like, he's like, this club in New York has everything. That's <laughs> it had everything. <laughs> it had – we had a shooter tutor. We had s prize wheels galore. We had street hockey. We had music and a big red radio. We had s four or five food trucks. There was a petting zoo. Not – to be confused with SNL when he says reverse petting zoo. And I go, what is that? He goes, you pet the animals, they pet you back. <laughs> we didn't do that. It was just regular animals. But if you could name a barnyard animal, they had it. They had all uh. kinds of games and stuff. It was crowded. They had all the college kids were there. People from the community were there. It was really, really cool, really, really well done. Uh, so kudos to everybody who was involved. Big kudos to Jeff uh, on our staff for really spearheading this entire caravan, I guess, if you will. Uh, and helping us get it off the ground. But we still got two more stops coming up uh, September 6th in Waterloo at Young Arena before their uh, preseason game. So that'll be fun. Check that out, especially if you're in the Waterloo area. Come on out a little bit early. Uh, kids, kids will get out of school on Friday. Come on down to the arena, hang out, have some fun, and then check out the game after. And then we'll be in Coralville the following week on September 12th. To we got live music planned out there. There's going to be games. Again, street hockey at all these spots. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Kelsey and Morgan will be there thing, selling some merch. And Slanging whatnot. the merch. Slanging, Slanging it. it. And uh, that'll be really fun to get people excited for the preseason game that's going to take place out there just a few short weeks after. So that's Wild on Wheels presented by Quickstar, which has been great so far. And then uh, Wild on the Green presented by Wheatley Vodka coming up on October 7th. Golf with the players. Registration still open, but spots are filling very, very quickly. So if you it's golf with Joey too, if you want to ask Joey some hard hitting riding the bus podcast questions. Yeah, if you g I'll golf with you if you yeah. want to include golf me in your foursome. You can't golf free. with me. I don't golf that day. Yeah, feel free. It's um, my big day of work. But yeah, spots are filling <coughs> up quickly, um, and they're we're gonna fill up all the spots. So if you are on the fence about should I play in this tournament, do not wait because now. you might miss your opportunity. So get in there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, Registration, I think, ends in about a month or so, maybe a little bit sooner, maybe mid September. So, um, yeah, that'll be a, a good event. But that's kind of what we had coming up. So now, mm. now we can talk about it. The video's out. Everybody's seen Might it. Might be hard we to relive that to day it. a little bit. Um, you know what? I've uh, I've gotten. I don't know that I've, I can't. I, get, getting over it. I don't know is the right word. For anyone that didn't see the video. What are we talking about right now? Just in case. So 
as if you if you haven't seen the video, that's fine. But if you, but you listen should. to this podcast, you, really you know what yeah. you kind of know. Unless you're living under a rock. Uh, we went to the state fair this year to defend well, twofold. One, to qualify in the contest. Just wanted a place. Two, to defend my cow chip throwing title. Uh, and we were all geared up, ready to go. And um, I mean, I don't know how behind the scenes we really want to get. We heard some rumblings. You know, when we mm-hmm. got there, that this might be a thing. And we didn't confirm no. or deny anything. We kind of heard. We were getting our media passes. And people were talking about it. We said, you know what? Let's just go up there and take a look. We shot our intro. We get up to Pioneer Hall, and we find out that the contest was canceled. Um, to which point, it, I mean, it was disappointing. That was like our entire plan for the day, and it kind of threw everything for a loop. Um, trying to figure out what to do next what to do next. We we're going to continue some man in the street interviews very quickly. Um, you and, and Abby realized, you know what, this is probably better suited. Just like, let's just follow Joey's sad day at yeah. the fair, but let's have them think we're still doing man on the street stuff. And that's exactly what we did. You guys are like, Oh, you see it on the sky glider. And it all came out. It was very funny. We had a plan. It was very, very and funny. We, we do have Abby, uh, our, our editor. We have her with a headset on so she can chime in on how that all came to be. I'll tell we you. We really just it. I the thing I kept thinking was, life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Life cancels the cow chip throwing contest. Find a way to make good content yeah, out of it. Show Joey's and I, sadness. Yes, and it, we and did. I, it was at your expense. There's no yeah, question no, about I that. Got, I got no problem being the no. part of the joke. So, uh, but I w- I will tell you if there's one thing that disappointed me more than anything for this entire day, was when we learned that, and I don't. I don't really care because they didn't give it to me. Um, I was like, should I share this? Should I not share it? But no, I'm going to share it. Uh, that there was going to be a trophy for this contest. Uh, and Which we did get that on camera. It just didn't make sense in no, the video. No, we couldn't fit in the video. But that was a good, still that, haven't that, that was a good cut. Haven't seen it. Don't know what it looks like. Have an idea of what it looks like based on what we were told. Um, <laughs> I got to tell you, not being able to have that trophy – it's gonna it's gonna give me nightmares until next year's state fair because the blue ribbon that sits on my fridge is cool and me being able to put in my Twitter bio which I'm gonna do just after we finish recording here that I'm also the 2024 state champion with a little little star next to it little asterisk just to be safe but Barry Bonds of cow chip throwing basically yeah. minus the steroids but <laughs> I really thought that trophy would be cool to have and I'm still trying to finagle a way to get it into my hands just to have for this year and you know the people who have the trophy I do you, the you have, have trophy. a relationship with those people yep. because you've just had contacts with them through being a marketing yep. director and so i just don't know <laughs> if i can get them on board so still pushing for it but yeah uh, could we could we could we try and host a cow chip throwing contest here to replace the fair oh cow God. chip throwing contest you, We've I've alluded to this in the, in the past, and I know at some point my dad's going to be listening to this and going to hear this point, and he's going to be screaming and yelling. I told you, I told you. He's been saying that we should do a cow chip throwing contest on ice for two years now, um, and uh, saying he's saying it would sell it. You know, go against the champ, see if they can beat the champ, and and I'll tell you, I I got no interest in on it. ice. Yeah, I got no interest in it because on it can go. <laughs> It, there's so many. I don't even know things. if we need to do it during also, a game. Could but <laughs> also, when we were at the fair and we found out it was canceled, the woman who's in charge of the event was like, "Yeah, it's just the logistics to bring it in. I just don't know if they can do it again." What logistics are we talking about? <laughs> we're talking about just bringing in a bucket of cow chip. Those are your logistics. Like that to me. That is it. And it a trophy, it. Like which is already made. We could do it in the parking lot, maybe. Um, I like the idea of doing it on the ice, but don't do it on a game day. No, well, I don't. I also don't want to do it on the ice because you're you're limited. Your uh, distance stops. You want that record? I want to be able to throw it as far record. as I can. That's my issue with when we're at Pioneer Hall. The trees are in the way, and they one thing. And we you, would, yeah, you. They changed well, the course. Far, how far did you? Th- how far did you throw it last? Hundred forty three feet. Yeah, and, and it rinks two hundred feet. They on ice, that would slide down to the boards. You'd have a lot of people that hit the boards. They changed. So you can't the c- do it on They the changed ice. the layout of the whole yeah. thing this year, so w- I don't. I don't know what would have happened, but I'm gonna. I'm until I've been dethroned. I'm still a champ, so I might as well give myself the the title that never was. 
Joe is handling this really well, if you guys can't tell. He's, <laughs> he's <laughs> clearly. Abby, you know. when you were putting together the video, which you did so wonderfully. Thank you. How much did you laugh putting it together? Um, I definitely had to make a few just fun little edits before just because I, I couldn't stop laughing. Like the yeah, sky you were s- you were me. you were sending us some the night of, and it it, it had me. Uh, there was one the cut of him saying, of him saying, uh, the first cut to the sky glider when he goes, let's be honest, and then the sky glider pops up. That that had me really laughing. And you sent that <laughs> to us. I just updated first my night. Twitter bio. Good. I got people in my my mentions already. Put it on LinkedIn, not just Twitter. Share that. Yeah, that's a professional Brag accomplishment. Brag about it. Uh, Cookie, accomplishment. Cookie, who comments on a lot Cookie's of our stuff. Cookie's a big stuff. fan. Yep. Yeah, um, Cookie's she, great. She enjoyed the big blue alien that I walked away with as like a <laughs> consolation prize. Um, hey, you stuck those footballs, though. Yeah, I you can, did. I can sling the rock. You did, yeah. Can you, can, you stuck those footballs. But Winning uh, a carnival game, that's no easy feat either. So you guys are too funny, but... Poor Joey, reigning champ for another year and time to train for bigger goals. That's a mm. world record cow chip throw, which, you know what, Eva, you're not wrong. Um, Olympics that's 2028? Yeah, imagine <laughs> cow chip throwing with an Olympic sport. Oh, my God. I'd be able to, yeah, that'd be there something. is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Dad, uh, I could bring home a medal. Yeah. No, it was all right. I mean, I we talked a lot throughout the, you know, so everybody was like, oh, yeah, you, you can do it. The title. There's no silver lining to this story. No, there it's actually is any way you cut it, but you know, it is what it is. We made the most out of it. Hopefully, you, you all enjoyed the video. If you haven't watched it, it's it's hysterical. Probably it's so funny. It's probably the favorite video we've done. The Happy Gilmore stuff was really fun. But oh, this isn't. But even this close. is better because it's original. Like this we just took it close. and ran with something. This, and this to me, I filmed some funny content pieces in my life. This might be. The funniest one that I've been a part of. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. It's so funny. I, I did like that. I did some stupid funny like in high school we had like a TV program and we had a whole segment every week on this thing that was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah. But this this was good and uh, but a lot of it was is the way that Abby had it cut and edited. It is like that's, the, that's the <laughs> mastermind <laughs> behind everything. W- Abby nailed the it. The splicing between interviews mm-hmm. and the yeah, it was the the change the music is unbelievable. Yeah. It's just uh yeah. Go if fun. you haven't watched it, you got you have to you watch it. Check it out. You have to watch it. Uh, yeah. Speaking of creating content and stupid ways to create content, I got duped last week. Duped. duped? I got duped into a TikTok video. Oh. <laughs> I knew you would. And I knew Joey, would. let me tell you. Oh, this is what you're talking this about. This is what I'm talking about. Oh. And Joey, let me tell you, Hold hook, on. <laughs> hook, line, and sinker. I was, I was the trophy fish going home. I got hauled in and mounted on the wall. Hook, line, and sinker. Oh, my God. I can't. So I'm not going to share this with everybody because I want to wait till the video comes out. Yeah. But I, I do want to just put out there. Your anger is misdirected. I don't know why you're coming at me thinking that I'm the problem here. I was just said, hey, there's this trend that would be really funny. Who can we get? And I was like, well, you got to get people who probably don't know what the trend is. So Ding. people who don't <laughs> have social media, uh, that that lit up a light bulb for some uh, more than just me. Um, I, I gave a couple names, um, yours being one of them. <laughs> But this was not this like is where the anger is directed. But but listen, but listen, I gave a lot of other names too. Shaky was one of them. I don't know if he got roped into it. There were some other people in the office. But uh, now, now I'm really excited to see it. I I you texted me and said, you know, don't start a prank war. You That's all I'm that. going to say. I had no idea oh, what you're you were in talking for it about. It's like I wouldn't even consider that a prank because I really wasn't involved. Oh, in it. but you but how I was implemented into this. You threw my name into the hat. I don't go after the little fish. Like like Brooklyn is executed. It. She's not the. She's not the head honcho in this ben, whole I thing. I gotta tell you. I she's not the head you. honcho Listen, in this. You can spin it any way you want. Had I not mentioned your name, one of the seven other people in that office doesn't matter. You brought it up. I'm just funny. going to say you are going to want to sleep with one eye open. You're going to want to check corners before you turn around them. It's on. Man, it is on. You know Let what? me tell you. It's on. I couldn't on. be less concerned. Oh. I couldn't be less concerned because I could tell it's, you. It's on. I it's can on. tell you. No. No, no, no. You think you, you think you got the upper hand right now? 
And if we want to go down this route, we can. Do you think you have the upper hand? I promise you, you don't. <laughs> I promise you. you if don't. anyone has any good prank ideas, I already have a bunch, but open to them. Yeah, send them uh, to Ben because he needs them. He says he's got a bunch, but he's calling for help right now. Oh, the games I can play. Uh, that it's official now. I've I've officially set the table for what this season will be, which is is it's all season long. It will be unrelenting. Okay. I can hold a grudge like anybody. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't. I, I had to get that. I'm out not going to take a shot until you take a shot. So <laughs> I get it. No, it's fine. Do what you. Gotta I'm looking do. forward to this. Do what I'm you got to do. Looking forward to this, and I'm especially looking forward to the moment where. I don't know who it'll be, whether it'll be you, you or me takes it, we over, takes it over the line. Yeah. 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 Someone does it, we're like, well, this is too much. I'll tell you, <laughs> it, it won't take long. <laughs> it won't take long. It won't take long. Anything else that we want to touch on before we, uh, we wrap up episode 42? No, I don't think so. Since we're getting close to 50, if there are uh, ideas that people, things they'd like to see for episode 50. Clip show. <laughs> clip shows, that'd be hard. Yeah. There's there's just so yeah, much and we don't have the the you know between the three of us I just don't know if we have the the staff to properly pull it off. To go and I'd love to everything. do a clip show. Yeah. I don't know, maybe we could. That's uh it's tricky. Yeah, and that might be tough. But if you have ideas, things you'd like to see for 50, we're open. <laughs> don't take by the time don't we take by clip the show. I will <laughs> say by the time we get to 50, we're probably going to be here in season with it'll be in guys. season so yep, if it'll be if in there season. are guys we want to see i don't know i kind of like the way we did media day last year which is kind of a rotating yeah, door yeah. so maybe we just do that again but uh, maybe 50s from the hot tub maybe it is yeah, we, it, we are tub. legally obligated to do that maybe that's yeah. the maybe that's how we ring in 50 could be in the hot tub could sundance be. maybe a sundance over at yeah central iowa pool and spa we'll, we'll see hip, those hip jets we'll see yeah the hip jets <laughs> Uh, t- thanks to Central Iowa Pool and Spa for bringing you this podcast. Also to Abby Kimball, our editor, who I won't put you on the spot this time with two honks for the win. Well, that <laughs> that was really funny. But it'll happen again. So be yeah, ready. and and when you you gave me the deer in headlights look, was that two episodes ago? No, last episode. That was the, that, that was, was the last Evers episode. Evers, Evers, yep. Yeah. So we won't put you on the spot this time. Thank you. But thank you for for putting this together and for doing a smashing job on the fair video. Can't speak highly enough about the job you did on that. Also to my partner, Joey Goldstein, and to Jeremy Kaur with Executive Podcast Solutions for making this listenable for all of you out there. And to our viewers and listeners for tuning in. This has been Episode 42 of Riding the Bus, the official I Am a Wild podcast. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ben Gislason signing off. And as always, I'll pitch it to the defending champ. Two honks for the win. Thank you.